it's hard for me to believe that you would be watching this video by accident. Um, so if you're wondering why a crypto channel is talking about washer rods, um, it's because I don't do this for a living. I don't want to set up a new channel to talk about repairing appliances. I have no reason to monetize this information. So here it is for free. And make of it what you will. So this washer uh, has several design challenges. But in Hawaii, it is difficult to get a new washer. Um, last I checked, the waiting time was between six months and a year. Um, yes, this is COVID pandemic time and supply chains are heavily impacted. However, this was true before. Um, you can't just bring a new washing machine to the middle of the Pacific Ocean without some forethought. So uh, lead time on washers is long. And <clears throat> I just thought I'd try my hand at repairing it. And so if you're watching this, your YouTube history probably looks a lot like mine at this point. Uh, lots of washing machine repair. Uh, and the recipe is always the same. Try leveling the machine. Try putting some Vaseline on these little, uh, these little cups, you know, make sure that they can spin in there. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff that people theorize, um, down to taking off a plastic cover on the bottom, making sure that the spinning mechanism is actually in one piece. So at the end of all that, if you still haven't figured out why it doesn't balance, you're supposed to order new rods, replace them. Several of these YouTube videos will tell you that they don't know why um, rods go bad or how, uh, but they know if you replace them, that fixes it. So that's why you eliminate down to that point, because it's kind of not understood. And I just kind of refused to accept that a magical factory of elves in Kentucky that works for Whirlpool or whoever makes these things with a certain amount of magic in them, and that after a few years, the magic wears out. You just have to get new ones that are fully charged. And mechanically, you can look at this and your intuition tells you, well, maybe the springs are different, right? Like, you know, here's, here's uh, how much springiness is left in this one. And maybe it's different between the four of them. One of them is more worn than the others. Or one of these rods might be more bendy than the others, bent. That just bothered me. You can't detect the problem with your naked eye. The reason I say that is because those sort of machine tolerances are usually reserved for high-end engineering, space shuttles, combat aircraft, or uh, Mazda RX-7 rotary engine that uses hydrogen. These are extraordinary tolerances. There are millions of washing machines that are built like this. And they all kind of work. So, what is it that wears out? I had resigned to ordering a new set of rods, and I ran across the washer dryer guy who wanted to know. He was diving into what is it that I can do to revitalize a set of used rods. And after watching that video, I figured it out. Because he's, he's this close. He's really, really close. What he does is he takes some liquid nails and pours it in here. And he tightens this cup down onto it and molds the liquid nails <coughs> into this form. And by doing so, he increases what he calls the grippiness of this part. Now this is going to hold on to this rod better than it did before. But after thinking about that, that can't be the answer either. It bothered me because this is a metal rod. In a war of metal against plastic, the metal always wins. This lid is an example of that. It has metal hinge springs in here. And most of the versions of this washer have a glass top. They have a broken hinge. This thing is screwed up in some way. And it always will be screwed up. And this is what we get in an economy of planned obsolescence, when you know something is supposed to work for a few years and then you're supposed to buy a new one, because this is how we keep the economy moving. 
these durable goods all have these parts that wear out. And there's got to be some trick to that, right? So this lid is just poor design. This is a little weirder because in looking for the answer, it doesn't seem apparent anywhere. But think about that plastic part and the motion of this rod for a second. What would you do to keep it from wearing out? Well, put some kind of lubricant there, right? Some kind of stuff. And if you've taken one of these apart, you've noticed that it's all greasy inside here. You're halfway there because it is grease. But it's not the kind of grease you think. In fact, I, I ran an experiment before this video. Uh, trying to use some Vaseline to see if that would help slow down the, uh, the motion. But it didn't. It's not quite sticky enough. It's meant as a lubricant and not as motion grease. So what's this? All right. Grease serves multiple purposes. It's preserving this metal. It's keeping my cats from getting into this video. <laughs> this grease serves multiple purposes. First, it protects from rust. Obviously, it's a petroleum-based product, or in this case, it's synthetic petroleum-based product. It keeps this from being worn. When you get a new set of rods, you'll notice that this will move, but the motion is very smooth. It doesn't take a lot of effort, but it's smooth. It's grippier in the other guy's video, you know. And so that's true, but this grease also takes energy out of the equation. So let's change how this washing machine is built into something that's a little more obvious, a trampoline. If I was to build a trampoline, I might have four legs. I might have four springs that attach to those legs and a piece of fabric. And you jump up and down on that fabric. As you jump, and the, your weight pulls down on these springs, energy is stored into the spring. A good spring will give you most of that energy back. And so, if that's happening, and these springs are not rusted or broken, or obviously losing springiness in some way, even compared to new ones. So as long as the energy comes back, no problem. How do we remove the energy? The answer is this grease, this motion grease. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to increase the grippiness against this rod. I'm going to add some motion grease. I'm going to close it back up. And we're going to see, it, see what happens. Now I'm going to use an epoxy putty because this stuff sets really quick. My favorite uh, version of duct tape and string is this uh, JB Weld epoxy putty. So we're going to grab a pinch of this. And if you haven't used this stuff before, you fold it over. Mash it, then fold it. Mash it, then fold it. That mixes the resin in this epoxy. Get a little more than this. The stuff will start to get warm you need to apply it. Now, I'm a little bit nervous. I'm not going to put this into the plastic cups themselves because I don't want it to necessarily bond with those. But maybe I do. But for this experiment, I'm going to try not to do that because I'm afraid if I put it in there, it'll bond too tightly to the steel and then it'll, uh, I won't be able to get it to move back and forth uh, through, through this bead.
Well, folks, it's been about three weeks since I first took this uh, washer apart and started tinkering around on the inside of it. And uh, since I put it back together, it has really done a lot of laundry. As you can see, I'm not wearing those ridiculous sweatpants anymore. I'm back in my work jeans and a comfortable shirt, so that's nice. Uh, especially since I'm recording myself for the purposes of, you know, thousands of people to see on YouTube. So, um, you know, I only have to be so embarrassed now up to this point in the video. Well, my wife said to me this morning, one of the nicest things she's ever said to me. It works even better than when we first bought it. And it really does. When I first ran this, I taped down this piece of glass because I was worried it would just jump out of here. Given that how this thing moved around before, there was no way I was going to just let that sit in the top of it because I was worried it was going to bounce out and just shatter all over the all over the concrete here. So I taped it down and now you can see that's not even necessary. This thing is so solid it just sits here. It goes through a whole spin cycle. Uh, what my wife means is that since we've had this washer and we did buy it used but since we've had it it has never completed a high speed spin cycle and it does now. And so what happens is like if I reach in here I grab let's get some shorts. I got some shorts here. These were the ones that were in that wash. And the, as you can tell, these are kind of a uh, sports jersey material and it's almost dry. It's That stuff like wicks away water really well and the spin cycle almost completely dries it. So uh, that's how it should be. You know, towels and stuff are still kind of wet. If I, if I look at this, you know, this guy in here, this is this is gonna need a little more, more dry time. You know, we'll hang this up on the line, obviously, and, uh, and get it dried today. So, it's a funny thing about editing video is that you always have one more thing to say. And so cutting this short has been brutally difficult. Hopefully you've been at least a little bit entertained and the sped up parts of the video are made, made as much sense. Uh, and you didn't mind the music and the terrible sound in, in the first, first few minutes. So if you're still watching, here's one final thought for you. We made a new bushing to slide along this rod, right? And the fluid that we put in between the bushing and the rod is a motion control grease. That grease in the original rods was put into a cup and there was a lot of it. And so my hunch is that that amount of grease would last a long time. It was designed specifically to get you two, three years down the road until it started to misbehave. This rod is a different type of problem, right? So with us having a, a much tighter restriction here, this motion may wear off the grease a little faster. So if you get six months, a year down the road, I expect that you may have to turn it upside down and throw some more grease on it. I bought a 50 gram tube for $20 on Amazon. I suspect that I'll be passing that down to my grandchildren and maybe great grandchildren before I die. I mean, there's, I use almost none of it. Um, so if you're doing a lot of these, you might get a lot of rods out of one, one tube of grease. Um, I'm definitely going to be set for a long time. Hopefully it helps some of you. I never intend to do another washing machine repair video, even though I do have the replacement for that piece of glass, which is some lightweight Lexan. Uh, this is some polycarbonate, but there are a lot of design flaws in this particular washer and, uh, you can find fixes for them a lot of other places. The guy that inspired me to you know, fix it in the way that I did is washer dryer money. I give him you know, all the credit. Uh, he, he got this to the one yard line. I just have to be a guy who knew about weird grease, weird sticky grease, um, and, uh, and how to remove energy from the, from the problem. Um, that's it, that was, that's my sole contribution to this, entire, to this entire affair. But it turns out it's a key, it's a critical contribution. So, uh, you can subscribe to Washer Dryer Money if you need more washing machine repair videos. And you're welcome to stay here if you want to learn a little bit about crypto uh, and some more techie, geeky stuff. So we'll see you around.